we're going to have a discussion right now, and it's going to be a discussion. We're not going to talk up here because we're not authorities. Uh, and we're, we're going to try to talk about how social science could best input into wood culture. In other words, what will be, what, how would we better utilize the social sciences in the, the, our quest to push forward wood culture? And uh, Professor Huang and myself will be up here to help the discussion because uh, my f first language is uh, English and that's about all I have. And Professor Huang obviously speaks Chinese and also he can speak English, which I can't speak Chinese. So we're going to start doing that. Do you have something to say? May I speak in yeah. Chinese? Yes, that's okay. what I mean. 我想英語也不是很好,但是我盡力努力聽。如果大家的問題那個我們講的不太好的話,請大家原諒啊。OK,we're okay. going to kick off for the discussion. I know there's some people out there that are eager to chime in. So I see you smiling, Harvey, so it's your turn. is to uh, try to suggest ways which the social sciences, which I, in which I include psychology, history, sociology, anthropology, I probably left one out, um, but also I think the humanities are important here too, the arts uh, and the like. How those uh, disciplines or areas of study can help us uh, develop a more effective relationship between wood and culture, okay? So that's our task. Let me start by saying, uh, and, and this is for discussion purposes rather than my stand, or sitting down here telling you what I think should be done. Uh, let me start by saying that if we remember that the social sciences and the humanities are about the study of human beings individually and in groups and, and what they do, uh, then it seems to me what we're asking is that we develop um, a material or materials social sciences and humanities. Well, what do I mean by that? Um, what I think that means is that we need to begin to try to figure out, and this is where I'm going to pose a question to you, how and why wood has an affect, and by that I mean a, a relationship or to, to the human feelings has an, has an affect on human behavior and how the social sciences are interrelated with Wood's very, its, it's material nature. Uh, and that's what, I, what I, I think what we're trying to do here. Um, so that's how I begin by, by saying we, we need to figure out ways to, to understand both, both how Wood affects us, why we want to touch it, why we want to smell it, okay, and and why we want to be around it, uh, and and why it does, and that may even take us into the physical sciences as well. So let me stop there uh, and see if anybody has any suggestions or ideas. May I uh, react with a question? Is there any precedent in uh, the social sciences of studying the interaction of other materials with mankind? Man and stones, man and metal, man and bronze, man and ivory. Is that a valid subject and have beautiful results been achieved there? In response, Yes, in uh, the uh, field of world history, there is a subfield called commodities. In fact, Harvey is something of a pioneer in this uh, respect as well. And we study the ways in which various commodities have not only uh, influenced human behavior and human culture, but in ways in which human culture has influenced these commodities. Silk, for example, spices wood, uh, cod, 
These have all been uh, uh, commodities that have been uh, written about rather extensively and studied. We should not only look at the way in which a commodity influences human behavior, but the ways in which human behavior and human culture uh, work on that particular commodity to transform it. It's, uh, it cuts both ways. Do we see other people that are willing to talk? Oh. Thank you. Uh, it's very interesting that this was posed as an academic question because I don't see it as an academic question at all. Uh, it's, this weekend I've been introduced to a lot of people, all of whom have told me I am Mr. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so and I come from such and such a university. And uh, I come from a completely non-academic background. I'm somebody who uses wood and makes things from wood. And uh, the social sciences may well have something to tell us about the use of wood, but I think the people to speak to are the people who use wood and who make things from wood. And I would like to see an analysis of this question come from, come from looking at practice. And uh, you don't need to ask a tribal person who carves something in Africa uh, to do some research to find out why he likes wood. He likes wood because it works for him, it feels good, and that's just about enough, I think. If we overanalyze the problem, we're ignoring the obvious to some extent, I think. I think uh, one of the ways that uh, sociology can, can help us is to, uh, to record oral histories, especially through tribes. Um, I worked for 18 years up in Alaska and uh, worked with the native community up there and lots of, lots of their stories have not been written down. Lots of stories are interpreted from generation to generation. And I think the, the so social aspect of it, if they could record and get down exactly what it means for them, for example, to make a totem pole. What does it mean? What, is, what does a totem pole mean? What's, what's the oral history behind a totem pole? I think that would help us to understand and to be able to use wood even better in the future. Okay, we've gotten discussion from the front, but I haven't seen any. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zong感觉就有很多的收获。过去就是我们搞木材的和一些搞建筑的人呢，牵涉到一点点木文化，但是现在来自各方面的专家教授来讲了很多有关木文化的东西。我听了收获非常大，但是我始终在考虑一个问
is something natural. In the future, for the trend of uh, wood culture, there will be a combination of uh, aesthetics and art, and also environment friendliness. That will be the trend in the future for wood culture. Do I hear some more comments? Let me, let me try one for myself. Uh, there's been a lot of conflict in many countries about wood and what to do with wood. We've heard many speakers talk about the fact that forests have been devastated and cut down. And as we have more and more people in the world, to me those conflicts are going to become more and more important. And so somehow uh, we should discuss about the fact that if we look at the culture of wood and feel that wood is important since it's rather a unique individual, it's a very large living species, not like stone and metal, which we don't consider living, it's an organic material. How, how are we gonna live, how are we gonna live on this planet with our trees? And how are we gonna use wood culture to decide how to make those decisions? And so, does somebody have some comments about that? And we've already talked about things that might be important, like writing down records, cultural records of things, and other areas. Let's think of some other ideas about how we can help wood culture to help human beings live with trees. Uh, I'd like to mention politics because uh, in my own country the Green political party has immense political power now. They are a coalition with the federal government and the Green party uh, is very strongly influential in use of forest resources and uh, uh, that doesn't mean they don't want it to be used. It generally means they want it to be used very wisely and I think that uh, the political philosophies and movements of the future will influence the use of wood culture as much as anything else. You know, Howard, I'm a rather optimistic uh, guy. <laughs> and since about the middle of the 19th century, there has been a phenomenon taking place in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, called the greening of urban spaces. One of the great uh, pioneers, of course, was Frederick Law Olmsted. I was just at the Olmsted Homestead uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts uh, last month. As you know, Frederick Law Olmsted was the father not only of Central Park, but essentially helped to transform the urban uh, landscape of almost every American city, and also had a profound impact upon uh, uh, urban planners and architects across the waters. I think uh, this movement toward, uh, for example, uh, placing trees on uh, high spaces, on uh, tall uh, buildings, as we see in New York City, in uh, Berlin, uh, in also uh, Beijing, is a very promising start. I think really, the, uh, especially as we see the terrible pollution of our uh, cities, uh, salvation lies uh, in our uh, uh, green spaces. Green spaces not just like Beihai Park, but also green spaces that we create uh, in and around our buildings. Well, there's another good suggestion, and it's, I've seen it in cities in the United States. I can't say I've seen it. I've seen it in Europe, but yeah. So, go ahead. Yes. Uh, okay. No? I'd like to talk about uh, my own observation. I hope that uh, more and more people will join in the research on the water culture. I think that in terms of wood, no matter from the history of our evolution, we need to interpret those kind of uh, secrets. For example, during the excavation work, in terms of those kind of uh, natural excavation, we also touch upon the excavation of the wood. It needs the interdiscipline study. In almost uh, 2,500 years ago in Chu State, 
in Jiangxi plant, uh, we discovered uh, 48 uh, uh, coffins so with a diameter of uh, 1.2 meters. On the surface, they didn't use any resin. They used uh, uh, some processing um, traces, and you can tell the science and attack level at that time. And also, how about the uh, knowledge of the tree types in the ancient time? It's almost out of our expectation. In the new stone age, and also the uh, war and uh, war states period, they have selected the same tree categories. For this uh, 48 uh, coffins, they use the same tree category. In this uh, Jiangxi area, they have diversified the tree categories, actually. And during my excavation case study in Zhejiang, Yuhuan, neighboring the Fujian province, uh, they have uh, diversified the tree categories. We excavated uh, hundreds of those uh, architecture. So the sampling of the wood uh, is also quite uh, uniform. And it all dep depends on the existence of the tree category in different uh, uh, localities. So I hope that we can involve uh, more experts from humanity, from art, from social sciences, so that we can jointly inter interpret uh, the um, history of uh, mankind evolution. Thank you. I'd like to contribute. I have attended uh, three wood culture symposiums. This one. We have uh, uh, more social science uh, papers. In the past uh, two symposiums, we have uh, more science uh, papers. So Mr. Ho is also making efforts so that uh, we can also involve uh, social science. And we should have uh, interdisciplinary uh, study. This is the right orientation. Uh, the other colleagues mentioned how we can integrate uh, humanity, social science, and masses into the research of the old culture. In China, social sciences and uh, humanities uh, do not have very really, uh, clearly defined the difference. We all integrate them into the social sciences. This is uh, the practice in the Chinese uh, mainland for uh, anthropology also belong to the social science. But history is not belonging to the social science. It's belong to the humanity. Yeah. Yeah. So in China, uh, those kind of concepts uh, are quite uh, blur. So when we are discussing with the international scholars, we have to identify those kind of differences. This is the first piece of uh, suggestion. And if we want to promote the research of the older culture study, we need to try to involve uh, the scholars and uh, research institutions and universities. And Mr. He has done a very good job by involving the uh, colleagues from the enterprises. And we'll have the clip uh, for, from Africa in the morning. We also have the joint competition of the elementary students. They are very good uh, cases. And in the future, we shall involve uh, politicians or those authorities uh, to be involved. This is the second piece of uh, suggestion. And uh, thirdly, as for the work of the International Water Culture Society, we need to do more promotion and uh, advocacy so that uh, more and more people will learn about our society. They all know that we are advocating water culture because uh, currently we have a uh, people who uh, love the wood and the forest. We have uh, those kind of uh, joint uh, con uh, concepts or thinking, but uh, we also need a promotion and uh, advocacy <coughs> to enable the general public to accept our concepts. First of all, 
I did not want to contradict my friend and colleague, but history is indeed a branch of the humanities, not social sciences. But there is this great schism in the United States between those uh, historians who think that they are humanists and those who think they are social scientists. But as, as you say, the, uh, the distinction is an artificial one at best. I'm wondering, and I ask this out of ignorance, how far this society has gone to reach out to like-minded private societies, such as the Sierra Club in the United States, such as the uh, Emerald Necklace Conservancy, which you probably never heard of, but the Emerald Necklace Conservancy, for example, which is a brand new uh, society, is uh, established in Boston, Massachusetts, and it promotes the philosophy of uh, Frederick Law Olmsted, of whom I just spoke. Uh, there are a number of smaller, uh, less international groups that I think that the, uh, this society should find common grounds with and ally with. I would hope that you would reach far beyond academia. Perhaps just a comment on your call to uh, involve politicians and get more exposure. I, I think that is okay, but you have to be very much on message before you do that. Before, because I, I think the slogan, Wood is good, is not good enough, if you see what I mean. It's very simple, Wood is good, but you will immediately uh, induce suspicion that people who shout wood is good would like to use wood at any price. So wood is good, but forest is better. If you can explain that wood culture and uh, derived from a sustainable forest is a win-win-win situation, which you also can convert into profitable dollars, into carbon uh, fixing, and God knows what, you have a good message. But be careful, because you can just as well say silk is good, but then uh, or cotton is good, and you can have a whole lobby who will point out that some silk or some cotton is produced at inhumane conditions or God knows what. And if you say wood is good, you have the whole anti-logging uh, lobby against you, while we have to explain that there are ways of logging and wood harvesting that are an absolute savior for mankind uh, uh, in uh, this global uh, climate crisis. What I'm about to say may not apply everywhere in the world. Uh, but it certainly applies to the United States. Um, one of the social sciences, if you can sort of call it that, uh, is, is education, the ways of pedagogy, understanding how people learn and how to teach people. Uh, and so what I'm about to say is really more of a policy statement, a suggestion than anything else. Um, and that is, out in the atrium we saw about 10 young people lined up who had just produced um, I couldn't tell what they produced because I was too far away, but they just made something. Uh, and in the United States, almost no child learns to work with wood in schools anymore. Now that's not the case in, say, Sweden or other cultures. may not be the case here. Uh, but certainly, it, one of the ways that our appreciation of, of wood as part of our culture and as a culture, uh, I think has to begin with with young people and their experience, which they may not come back to until they're much older. Usually, some of you, some of you in the audience will cringe when I say this. Usually people in their 20s want nothing to do with what they did in their teens, but later they figure it out. Uh, and so I think that's really an important way that uh, this organization could advocate, and, and in general an important way. Now I know that may mean exposure to other materials, and that's fine. People may want to work with metal, and that's their business. But really, I think understanding something about working with wood at an early age, and that it is not only uh, a good idea to do that, but now I'm speaking specifically to the US, 
but somehow working out a system where you don't get sued by some lawyer if Junior gets hurt in the, in the wood shop because he got a splinter or something. Now, I'm overstating that, but um, part of what is involved here is really beginning to work to change people's ways of thinking about working with the hand and working with the brain, or preferably the two of them together. Uh, that's a, a lot to chew on or, or a lot to take on as a responsibility, but it's something that the social sciences or through advoca advocacy uh, and maybe use of what we know from the social sciences about the way people learn and the way they work um, could be a real aid to this organization and to what this organization's mission is. Uh, Andrew. I speak in Chinese. If you, uh, I'll, I'll speak in English if you don't mind. I support uh, Peter, what you've been saying. It's been on my mind for some time when you started to prompt the discussion. Sustainability is the buzzword. And uh, to avoid misunderstandings, uh, when, if, uh, when IWCS or like-minded organizations champion the appreciation of wood culture and bearing in mind sustainability is the buzzword and, and wood utilization goes, should now go hand in hand with forest management, sustainability, and that, and that, that is why to avoid misunderstandings, uh, 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 organizations like IWCS, uh, uh, UFRO has been very much aware of these issues for a long time, has been championing the, the importance of sustainable management of forests and, and therefore sustainable forest products utilization. The reason why forest products industry came about is because trees are grown to produce forest products so that you can use. Then the idea now is to make sure that you have enough resources for the, for the future generations to, to be able to, to produce forest products in perpetuity. So the concept of wood culture has to be, be mindful of the fact that the sustainability issue should very much be incorporated in any aspects of the wood culture activity that is being championed by the society. Um, and hence, even it would be nice once in a while, the wood culture meetings like this could be held jointly with the forest culture meetings just to portray a synergy, right? So that you don't get, that's what you said, an anti-logging lobby coming on against you to say that you're going to plunder the forest just to make wood materials. No, and I think that, that we've got to be very careful. It's a very politically sensitive issue when we, we, are, if, when we are addressing the uh, nature and conservation of the environment. I think I've said too much. Thank you. In Laos, my colleagues uh, went to Laos from uh, Guangxi Autonomous Region, and we passed a forest. There is a single standalone die dead tree, a gigantic tree. The complaint from my colleague was that the Laos people, they are really lazy. For such a nice tree, they don't cut it and make a boat out of it. I said, you are wrong. The Laos, they never use dead forest. They have never used the tree. They're not because they are lazy, but they don't never use dead trees. Because dead trees don't have uh, any life. Just different tradition and the custom. I forgot one thing, actually. Uh, Peter again he prompted this discussion. Uh, some time, somewhere along the line, somewhere in future, if the concept of sustainable wood culture could be in incorporated in education, forestry education, forest products education, where the young, the students, get a feel for it, and they will become future uh, implementers of what we actually want them to to understand for us, um, wood culture. So I think that's a good starting point. Education, maybe at tertiary level, at school level, whatever. Thank you, Peter. Again, again for the last time. Yeah. Again, you have to be extremely careful because. The fact that in Holland uh, we had such excellent education of our elementary schools to stop uh, deforestation everywhere in the world uh, is the, it now results in the fact that 
students at technical universities do not want to be taught about wood properties or wood technology. They go straight for the other commodity and they have not been, they're not sensitive to the idea that wood is indeed such a much more sustainable material than aluminum, concrete or whatever. So you, you can, we, we, we have to remain so multidisciplinary and indeed uh, combining the social with all the uh, natural sciences and the complexities of our planet. Uh, uh, otherwise, every narrowing down, even of what is good, is, as I said, not good enough. Thank you, Peter. Do we, do we have some more comments about that? Okay. I'd like to, in summary, we have a lot of uh, these good suggestions here. I just want to point out that we need human understanding to understand what we're going to do with our forests and how we do it. Uh, we've been trying to figure that out since man began, I guess. And there are probably differences of opinions based on country and religious values and historical values and other things. So we need to flavor, if we're going to talk about wood culture, we need to flavor the human influence in it. And that brings in the social sciences. Because one, one group of people may think one thing, another may think something else, and we need somebody to interpret that so we can best utilize our wood and express ourselves about the way we enjoy wood. So I think with that, since we're over our time, we'd like to thank you all for coming to this session. And we look forward now to the welcome dinner, which will take place in 30, oh, 33 minutes. Is that correct? OK, thank you. Thank you.